Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. Outkick the Show presented by Odd Shark. Go to Odd Shark for all of your gambling and informational related needs. I hope that you guys are having a spectacular Monday. I'd encourage you to go read the articles we've got up on Outkick right now. Great articles up on Outkick about Game of Thrones last night as well as this absurd USC uh, Title IX story which we're going to get to shortly. But have you seen the latest unbelievable news out of the Trump White House? Anthony, I believe, is his first name, right? I just know him as the Mooch, a.k.a. Scaramucci. He is out as White House Communications Director after just 10 days. That is a unbelievable swing of events inside of the Trump White House, even for the Trump White House. The Mooch being out this quickly is an unbelievable story. General John Kelly is now the new Chief of Staff. He came in and he immediately runs right out uh, the, uh, the Mooch. The Mooch is going to be famous forever for showing up and on one of his first days in office saying that he was not, and I quote, that he was not uh, uh, the, uh, oh, what's the guy's name, uh, David Bannon, the, uh, the alt-right advisor. And he said, I'm not David Bannon because I'm not trying to suck my own cock, which is probably the craziest quote in the history of the White House. The Mooch out as communications director. Again, if you're just getting this news, you're just getting this news. And I will say this. For everybody out there who's like, the Trump White House has been conspiring with Russia to rig the election. This is one of the most ridiculous allegations in the history of mankind. The Trump White House is not competent enough to do anything. Remember when everybody's like, oh, if Donald Trump ends up president, he's going to take away all our civil liberties and nobody's going to be safe and women and gays and lesbians and everybody, oh my God, what's going to happen? Minorities are screwed. Man, Donald Trump can't do shit. This dude is the most incompetent president in our lifetimes. He's not evil. He's just incompetent. He doesn't know what he's doing. The proving that the president has nothing to do with the economy. The economy is on fire. The, economy, the stock market's up like 20%. Unemployment rate is plummeting. Nobody in the White House has done anything. Zero. It's just Donald Trump is incompetent. And this just proves, if you had any doubt at all, that the president has no control over the economy at all. The econ maybe, this, maybe the answer is that politicians have just been fucking up. I'm kind of coming around to the idea that all politicians do for the economy is fuck it up, right? All they do is screw up. That basically if we just got out of the way and said, hey, just let the economy take care of itself, that everybody would be better off. Because the Trump White House is so incompetent that I think Wall Street is like, well, at least we know that nothing's going to happen. At least we know that nothing wild is going to happen one way or the other. We're going to be right smack dab where we are. And you can plan for nothing changing, right? Like it's not that difficult to plan for nothing changing. I'm really of the opinion that most business people are just like, just don't fuck up. Don't take us too far to the left. Don't take us too far to the right. Don't really do anything. Just get out of the way and let business handle itself. I'm telling you right now, because the economy is booming, and I'm not sure that we've ever had, in fact, I'm confident of it. We've never had a more incompetent president. But you know what? Trump's too incompetent to get us into war with Iraq. Do you think Donald Trump's administration could ever get UN approval to invade Iraq? My God, they would never be able to do that, which actually is good things. Now, I'm a little bit nervous about this whole North Korea thing because I'm afraid that Kim Jong-un might just decide to try to bomb L.A., and then we get into a huge nuclear war and we got Trump making decisions against Kim Jong-un. It's like having your 14-year-old cousin who can barely decide what to wear every day suddenly deciding that he's going to go to war. Uh, that, was a, that was a bad situation. But that's my only concern is just that Trump might at some point actually have to make decisions that matter. As is, this idea that he conspired with Russia and somehow kept it a secret and was able to get elected through a secret plot of back-channel negotiations with Russia, this dude can't even go have dinner without news of who he's eating dinner with leaking everywhere. The, 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 the Trump White House is a total incompetent pile of... It's like if we just decided, you know what, we're going to make the sitcom uh, in charge of the White House. I mean, you know, that's really what we've done. We've created a sitcom 
<clears throat> just to entertain everybody. There's absolutely no competence associated with this. Uh, so anyway, the mooch is out. John Kelly, the new, uh, the new White House Chief of Staff, the former General uh, John Kelly. And so the mooch, who came in 10 days ago, said he was not Steve Bannon because he was not trying to suck his own cock. He's now out. And we now have who knows who's going to actually be in charge. Came in, delivered the greatest quote in the history of the White House press office or communications office, and then got bounced 10 days later. The mooch also, I believe, in that 10 days managed, <laughs> managed to get divorced, have a kid, not show up for his kid's birth, get filed for divorce against him by his wife, say uh, that he was worried about the president so he couldn't be there for the birth. Uh, that is an unbelievable accomplishment. Uh, now, at least he lasts longer than previous, uh, but that was the rents. But man, what an unbelievable situation this is. Uh, amazing 10 days. Like, if you, if you try to think about the most fucked up job you've ever done, you probably, it's so hard to get a job that big and get fired within 10 days. I mean, almost impossible. Think about how incompetent you have to be. First of all, the person who hired you. In order to get fired within 10 days, the person who hired you has to be so incompetent. I mean, honestly, you know what we're dealing with right now? Donald Trump is running the country like George Steinbrenner ran the New York Yankees in the 1970s and the 1980s. And you guys may think I'm crazy. If you don't remember George Steinbrenner, he's doing everything that George Steinbrenner did when he ran the Yankees, except he's in charge of the entire country. I'm not, I'm not kidding about this. Think about it for a minute. If you ever followed the Yankees back in the days when George Steinbrenner was in charge of the team, Donald Trump is running the country like he's George Steinbrenner. He's treating the country like it's the Yankees. And remember Steinbrenner would fire people left and right. I mean, he was always doing something to entertain the tabloids. And on some level, that was great. But we imagine if George Steinbrenner had been the President of the United States. This is exactly what would have happened. People say, well, General Kelly wanted Mooch out. Well, yeah, no shit. But if you, Mooch is your guy and you bring him in 10 days ago and you work for six months to get him in and then you hire a new guy who doesn't like that guy, that's a sign that your management is incompetent. Thoroughly and completely incompetent. That's the truth. If you are bringing in your guy, all right, if you are bringing in your guy, and he's your guy and you're fighting to get him and you're firing other people to get him and then you go get another guy and, and fire that guy in 10 days there's no way to defend that decision making. It is utterly indefensible. And so welcome to the Trump White House. Again, I will say this. They should just stop the Russia investigation. The Democrats should just throw their hands up and be like, you know what? This Russia stuff is bullshit. There's no way that Trump's administration could have ever conspired to co-opt an election with Russia five minutes after they agreed to the conspiracy, it would have been on the front page of the New York Times. They are too incompetent to ever rig that. People are like, oh, Donald Trump is evil. The country's not going to be safe. No, he's not. He's not evil. He's just an incompetent dude. It's really like if we made George Steinbrenner the president of the United States back in the days when he was running the New York Yankees. There's no grand design of awfulness here. Again, the only positive is the stock market is surging, which proves that almost nobody in the White House has anything at all to do with the overall economy because the economy is roaring and basically just get out of the way, White House. Just get out of the way. Don't do anything. Don't screw things up. All right, what questions do you have about the Mooch being out? I'm Clay Travis. By the way, I think I said it at the top, but the Mooch getting fired kind of threw everything into, into, into craziness. I'm Clay Travis. This is Outkick, the show presented by Odd Shark. Go to Odd Shark for all your gambling and informational related needs. Yeah, every stock is roaring except for Twitter. Fortunately, I only have Twitter stock. I'm kidding. I've got Under Armour. I've got Take Two. I've got Activision. I've got um, WWE. And I've got Twitter. Everybody else is doing well. Those stocks are doing incredible. Activision and Take Two are anyway. What didn't he resign? I want the. You know what? You know what? I am so sick of didn't he resign guy, all right? Didn't he resign guy is up there with after taxes guy and with uh, and with all the other loony bins out there that I hear from all the time. If you, the same thing happened when Hugh Freeze resigned. People are like, Hugh Freeze didn't get fired, he resigned. If you resign in order to avoid getting fired, that is not a resignation, all right? Does everybody understand this? Can we please 
have an understanding and comprehension about this. If I say I'm going to fire you, don't be no trade guy. Don't be after taxes guy. Don't be he resigned, he didn't get fired guy. Don't be that dickhead of a guy. If I say to you, I'm going to fire you, all right? And then you say, no, no, you don't have to fire me. I'm going to resign. That's not, that's a firing, okay? I'm going to resign. Like, it doesn't save face. The reason why Hugh Freeze resigned was so Ole Miss wouldn't release all the ridiculousness that he was involved in. That's the only reason that he did not, that he resigned, all right? It's a, you need to, uh, is, do you people, some of you guys drive me insane. Borderline insane sometimes with all these stupid comments. There's not much of a difference between resigned and fired. Don't come with me with after taxes. And do not come out here running around with all this stupidity, all right? I'm not sure which one of you is worse. After taxes guy, did he resign or was he fired guy? Like, you guys are driving me slowly insane, all right? That's, that's the situation. Yes, if you're going to quit or be fired, you were fired. Uh, so that's the truth of the matter. Um, all right, a uh, couple of uh, Civics 101. Any, yeah, that's no kidding. All right, Chick-fil-A sucks guy is also dead to me. Chick-fil-A sucks guy is totally dead to me. All right, what questions do you guys have about the Mooch and the Trump White House right now? We got several things we're going to hit. We're going to talk about Title IX at USC, the ridiculous story involving the kicker, the Bama player who got a DUI while driving in the car. What questions do you guys have about the Mooch who showed up 10 days ago, gets fired almost immediately, unbelievable situation. I'm not going to talk about Colin Kaepernick. We talked about Colin Kaepernick already. Uh, no. Yeah, this is, this is, does Trump win again in 2020? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know who the Democrats are going to run. I'm not sure who's competent enough to even run them. Uh, yeah, is what, but doesn't, uh, doesn't give as much a play there. All right, let me go ahead and hit this. Do you have a timeshare you're looking at getting out of or you're just not using it or cannot afford it? Let my friends at Magical Realty help you sell it. Magical Realty does not charge any upfront fees to sell your timeshare, only getting paid once it closes. Visit MagicalRealty.com or email them at info at MagicalRealty.com. They might be able to help you rent out your timeshare. If selling is not the best option, contact them today. All right, two other additional stories. Did you guys see the story about the USC uh, the USC kicker. This is one of the most unbelievable stories that I have seen uh, in Title IX. You guys know I've written about it for a while. Title IX is fundamentally broken. Let me explain why. Title IX requires universities to conduct their own investigations into alleged sexual assaults. Those are independent investigations and they aren't connected to a potential criminal investigation. Let me explain why this is, uh, this is fraught with peril. First of all, if you are investigated for alleged sexual assault, you are charged with a crime. You probably did it, all right? Now, some people, you might be able to beat the charges because they're not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. But if police bring charges against you, you probably committed the crime. Now, there are exceptions. There are certainly exceptions. Duke Lacrosse is a good example. And defense attorneys are out there. And sometimes the worst feeling you can have as a defense attorney, and I've been a defense attorney, so I can speak to this. The worst feeling you can have as a defense attorney is someone that you believe is truly innocent being charged with a crime. Because then you worry that they might go to jail and you might not be able to keep them out. Because if they really didn't do it, one of the most overwhelming things as an attorney is trying to represent them. But, by and large, most people who are charged with crimes commit them, okay? But if you're not charged with a crime, then, well, let me take a step back. Campus sexual assault, there are two options. One, the police should investigate. If the police investigate and charge you with a crime, then you're kicked out of school because you've been charged with a felony, okay? Then the campus investigation doesn't matter. In the other situation, though, where you're not charged with a crime and they conduct a campus investigation, that's where Title IX comes into play and it's broken. Title IX has a standard of preponderance of the evidence. Preponderance of the evidence is the guilt standard, all right? Preponderance of the evidence is the guilt standard. And preponderance of the evidence only requires you be guilty at 50.1%. Basically, 50% plus a scintilla. In this USC case, all right, in this USC case, this kicker, the kicker who made the winning kick against Penn State, he and his girlfriend, according to her statement, were engaging in some sort of horseplay. They were rolling around, doing something outside, and somebody in a different building allegedly saw them, thought that they were engaging in a fight. That person contacted a USC coach. 
that USC coach then contacted uh, the Title IX office. The Title IX office conducted an investigation and it was flat out unbelievable. I want to read you this these details. This is from the LA Times. This is from her letter and it's up on the front page of OutKick right now. And if you don't think that this is a scary story or that our Title IX laws and rules are broken right now, you need to be pay, paying attention to this. This is from the LA Times. I'm going to read you some of the details of this. This is from her statement. All right, are you ready? Her statement that she sent in. The Title IX investigation began after a neighbor witnessed the kicker and his girlfriend roughhousing. The neighbor told his roommate, who then told a coach in USC's athletic department that Bormeister was abusing the girl. The coach then reported the incident to Title IX office. So think about where we are. We have a witness who told his roommate, who then told a coach. So by the time it gets to Title IX, it's third-hand information. Okay? That's an unbelievable story to begin with. She says that when she was called in for a mandatory meeting with Title IX, she told investigators the two were playing around and that she was told she must be afraid of her boyfriend and she told officials that she was not and there was no investigation or charge of the crime. She says, When I told the truth in repeated interrogations, I was stereotyped and told I must be a battered woman and that made me feel demeaned and absurdly profiled. This is his girlfriend talking. I understand domestic violence is a terrible problem, but in no way does that apply to Matt and me. She said she has, quote, never been abused, assaulted, or otherwise mistreated by Matt. She also says Title IX made her feel misled, harassed, threatened, and discriminated against, <coughs> and caused her to hire an attorney. The Title IX office's response was dismissive and demeaning, she also says that she did, that her boyfriend did nothing improper against her ever. I would not stand for it, nor will I stand for watching him be maligned and lied about. He was kicked out of school. Can you believe that? No evidence whatsoever. You just heard what the evidence was. In this situation, USC had a guy who witnessed this supposedly, told a roommate, who then told a coach... There is no evidence that anything improper happened here. It's one of the most ridiculous cases that I've ever seen in Title IX and there are thousands of these cases occurring everywhere on all of our campuses. Now, the intent here is a good one. The intent is to treat sexual assault as a serious crime. Here's the problem. Campus police investigations shouldn't be occurring around serious felonious activity. Would you want the campus authorities to investigate an alleged robbery, kidnapping, or murder? Think about that for a minute. We have two simultaneous investigations. One in the criminal justice system, the other in campus jurisprudence. Would you ever want, think about this, would you ever want, anybody who's ever been on a college campus, would you ever want campus authorities to investigate a kidnapping? If your son or daughter disappeared on a campus, would you be like, oh, well, on the one hand, we got this criminal investigation going on. On the other hand, I hope this campus investigation can take care of it. If there were a murder, would you think it was appropriate for the university to conduct its own murder investigation simultaneous while the actual murder investigation took place? It makes no sense. You cannot have two different investigations going on. There's no procedural safeguards. There's no modicum of justice for either the accuser or the accused. Campus Title IX investigations are broken. And there are thousands of guys, mostly men, although it happens to women sometimes, mostly men who are being victimized by this process. Now, if you are raping or accused of sexual assault, you should have an investigation done and if you're charged with a crime, you should be kicked out of school. But we can't have these kangaroo court processes happening, which I just read you, happens to a guy who happens to be the USC kicker. Can you believe that something like that is even, that something like that is even possible to happen in modern society should be terrifying? A lot of parents out there with young kids, can you imagine if your son got accused of sexual assault, was unable to defend himself, got kicked out of school, publicly branded a rapist, and never did anything wrong in terms of the criminal justice system ever charging him. 
you're guilty when you are accused. It's a kangaroo court. It's unfair. It's anti-American. And it's a fundamentally broken judicial process that shouldn't exist. This just started about six or seven years ago when the Obama administration gave new directives threatening universities that they would withhold federal funds if sexual assault investigations were not conducted more thoroughly. There are kids, thousands of kids now, 18, 19, 20-year-old kids, almost all men, who have been kicked out of school and have been publicly branded a racist, sorry, a racist, a rapist, and they are not able to ever get their name cleared again. It's a broken system, and reasonable people need to be involved in breaking it down and ending this absurdity that's taking place all over campus for a variety of absurd charges. I'm just telling you, there are probably a lot of guys and girls out there who have seen or heard about these investigations. After I just wrote about it at OutKick, my inbox has blown up at the number of guys that have been caught in these investigations. Basically, if you have sex now and somebody says, oh, it wasn't consensual, even if it happens months later. Did you guys hear about the kid, guy who played basketball for Yale? This is an unbelievable story, too. He had consensual sex with his girlfriend. They broke up months later after the sex act, after she had had sex with him a ton of other times since then. She went and said she had been raped. And he got kicked out of Yale. Wasn't allowed to play in the NCAA tournament. Wasn't allowed to graduate from Yale. Is now having to spend so much money trying to clear his name. Three months before he was set to graduate, he got kicked out of Yale. Wasn't ever allowed to graduate because his girlfriend said that he raped her months after it happened. And then she had slept with him a bunch of times since then. This is not a smart process. This is a broken miscarriage of justice that deserves to be addressed. The university should never be in the business of ever investigating sexual assault. They just shouldn't. Police should do their jobs. We shouldn't have Jameis Winston-like situations where the police don't actually conduct an investigation into an alleged rape. But a university conducting an investigation into a rape? Are you kidding me? Using different standards of justice and a different standard of guilt or innocence in the criminal justice system when they can publicly brand people as sexual predators, sexual deviants, rapists, and send them off for the rest of their life, never allowing them to be on campus? Shouldn't happen. Should not happen. Colleges have got to address this. The, well, here's a good problem. This is a problem right now with the way that our society works. People won't challenge. Let me give you an example. Right now, anytime a woman says that she was raped, if you say anything other than, I believe her, then people call you a rape enabler, right? That's the truth. I've used this as an example. Atticus Finch, for those of you who have seen To Kill a Mockingbird, when he proved that Mayola Yule had made up her rape charge against, I believe it was Tom Robinson in To Kill a Mockingbird, Atticus Finch on social media today would get destroyed because he'd be like, what do you mean the girl made it up? Think about it. Anybody who says anything about rape has to immediately be believed. If Atticus Finch cross-examined Mayela Yule in the public arena, and that was a modern-day campus sexual assault investigation, everybody out there would say that he was an evil human being. It's the truth. The purpose of an adversarial system is that it's better at getting in at justice, right? That's the purpose of our criminal justice system. So I look at all these accusations as an attorney. I say, okay, somebody said something happened. Well, somebody else is entitled to a reasonable defense, and we'll see what happens when all the facts come out. That's not what happens now. As soon as somebody says something happens, then the expectation is that the man is guilty and the entire kangaroo court is arrayed against him in Title IX processes. Look, if a court charges you with sexual assault, again, you probably did it. I mean, by, by the court, I mean the state. The state conducts an investigation, finds firm evidence that you did something wrong, then you should be charged with a crime. That's... 100% just. But if the state decides there's not a charge to be had and then they go out and they don't prosecute and then you get kicked out of school for something under kangaroo court investigative rules, that's a sign that the process is broken. 
period. And I think people are afraid to say it. They're afraid that they're going to be branded as pro-rape, as if anybody's in favor of rape. People are against crime, right? Like nobody gets accused of being pro-murder when they go out and try to defend a murderer. It's just a broken system. Any questions about Title IX right now? Any questions about the Title IX process or the USC case in particular? Uh, any questions? Uh, if not, I'm going to move on to the situation uh, with Alabama. Did you see this story? Alabama's top uh, defensive uh, tackle here. This is a really interesting situation, um, which is, I didn't realize that every state has different rules when it comes to DUIs. Deshaun Hand was sleeping in his car, not driving. According to this, now, Deshaun Hand was asleep in his parked car, not driving at the time of his arrest. According to Alabama state law, Hand was deemed to be in, quote, constructive possession of the vehicle. Although he wasn't driving and the vehicle was parked, the keys being in the car was the determinant that triggered the arrest. So he didn't even have the keys in the ignition. Again, this is an amazing kind of story. He was drunk, he climbed into his car, and he was not even with the keys, according to this article, in the ignition. And I don't even know how that's a DUI, frankly. If you are drunk and you decide to go sleep it off in your car, what are you supposed to do with the keys in order to avoid being charged with a DUI? You can't have the keys on your person. So what are you supposed to do? Throw them into the tree? Like that, that's, a, that, that's an absurd law in my opinion. That just is an absurd situation to me. You should not, like you say, can't have the cars in possession. You can't have the car keys in possession. What are you talking about? Where are you supposed to put the car keys? It's, it, 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 this story doesn't say the keys were in the ignition. This No, Tiger Woods was driving on the street when Tiger Woods was stopped. It's not uncommon for a guy who's drunk. If you're driving in the street and the car is moving, then that's a different story. Then, obviously, if you fall asleep in a, in a vehicle in the road, like you should be charged. Tiger was driving when that happens. This is different. Toss him in the trunk and then get your keys locked in the trunk so you can't leave. I mean, obviously, the answer is take an Uber. But do we even know how drunk he was? Again, this is the story. Hand was parked in a near-campus parking lot, sitting in the driver's seat with the headlights on, but was asleep with the car in park. So maybe he had the keys in. I don't know. Uh, maybe he turned on the ignition so that he had an air conditioner on. Um, it's a crazy story to me. And anyway, I, I understand that Alabama, they're upset. But to me, you can't suspend the guy for that. To me, you can't suspend the guy uh, for, for that. People are like, I saw where Feinbaum said Alabama has to suspend him for the Florida State game. I disagree. I think you bring him in, you teach a lesson, and that is the, uh, that's the story that everybody takes away. Uh, turn your lights off, no one shows up, though. Uh, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. Um, but uh, shouldn't be drunk. All right. Yeah. Go. go. I'm going to block... Shouldn't be drunk guy. All right, shouldn't be drunk guy's a pussy. Look, if you haven't been drunk in college, then I don't even, you shouldn't be watching this show. All right, if you've never had a bit of alcohol, then I think you're wasting your life. And every now and then I look up and com see comments, and if you are telling a college kid that he shouldn't be drunk, you're such a pussy, you don't deserve to comment on this show. First, uh, first of all, like every now and then I see comments that are so bad. And it's like, oh, you shouldn't be drunk to begin with. Well, okay, fuck you. You don't deserve negative comments on this show. That's my personal belief. So every now and then, I got to come in Clay Kyle people. I got to come, come in and Clay Kyle people. Look, you're in college. Don't drive drunk. Take an Uber. Walk home. All of those things I will tell you. But don't have beer in college, guy. Get the fuck out of this show. Go listen to Mike and Mike. Go entertain yourself elsewhere. And that means absolutely nothing. Uh, I say that as a guy who is not obviously a huge Alabama football fan, but I believe that he should be able to play in that game. All right, I love all of you guys. Thank you for coming to spend uh, your Monday with me. We'll be live tomorrow, uh, 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern. Lots to discuss. I'm headed to Costa Rica on Wednesday, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to do the show on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. I'm in Costa Rica for the weekend. And then I'll be back on Tuesday for the show. 
But again, I'll still be doing live, doing the morning show on Tuesday and Wednesday. Love all of you. Do not be resigned versus fired guy. Do not be before or after taxes guy. Do not be awful individual individuals who slowly drive me insane. Pour one out for the mooch. Drink, but don't drive in college. I'm Clay Travis. Title IX is broken and needs to be fixed. I love all of you guys. Thank you for hanging with me. DBAP, I'll see you guys tomorrow.